Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us this week for CDU 55. It's great to have each one of you with us, and we're so glad that you are able to join us. We just look forward to this time every week. Well, I say we, but look who's missing. You know, um, I think this is only the third time that Edie's been away when, we, when we've when gone to uh, tape this. And, uh, and I know that's, you know, I probably already lost half of you because that's why you're here. But appreciate those of you that have remained and thank you for staying with us. It's, it is just good to be with you. And uh, Edie, just so you know, she's, uh, uh, as you know, her mother lives up in Ramona and uh, she's spending a little time just taking care of her mom right now. So she'll be, she'll be away overnight and uh, just uh, being kind of part of the team up there that's helping. And her mom's coming along very well, by the way, those of you that have been praying, thank you so much. We really do appreciate that. And uh, mom is just doing quite well. And um, Recovering from that broken hip, bounced back from positive COVID uh, test very, uh, very nicely without symptoms, and uh, it's coming along quite nicely. So, uh, good report there. Um, we do want to. I do want to let you know just real briefly um, of a couple of prayer needs. Uh, uh, Shirley Heiser uh, went in for cataract surgery this week, and a lot of you have already gone through that, and many of you know how. In one sense, it's a very easy procedure, but at the same time, when you're messing with your eyesight, you know you just don't want to. You just don't want to mess around. Period. And so she was just concerned about that. I believe by now that that surgery has gone well, but to keep her in prayer. And then Pam Castillo has tested positive for coronavirus as well. And as you know, she has some underlying conditions that already are difficult for her. So please keep Pam Castillo in your prayers. Uh, so far. It's going fine, and we do trust that, uh, certainly with the Lord's intervention, that uh, she will move through this nicely. A um, couple of updates were just kind of things that you probably maybe know about, but at the same time, just want to keep you abreast of all these things. Uh, In-person services continue at City View Church, and we're so glad to be able to have the facility outdoors. And we have moved them from Saturday to Sunday. So now, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, we meet outdoors, one hour service. There are kids uh, children's ministries available at that same time. And it's been great to see some of you there. And uh, just, I know for a lot of you, are, you're kind of waiting to come back to Sunday mornings because it's during the daytime and that allows you to be there. So we had to kind of move around. We had to go to nighttime because of the hot the heat. And now we're back back to daytime meetings. And, uh, and if you can't join us on Sundays, um, uh, you know, the, the service is available online at both our website and on YouTube. So you can join us there at any time after that Sunday. Now, the great thing I am just loving about uh, a change we made two weeks ago with the with the Sunday morning service is it's live stream now. Still on Facebook, but it's a, it's a live stream service, which means that you can join, you know, you, you know who else is going to be there. You're, 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 if you join us at 10 o'clock, you're not just watching a, a videotape with with other people. You are watching a live service, and pretty soon we'll be able to add a couple more cameras, so you'll even be able to see who is there. And so we're developing that service and seeing how nicely that comes along. So we're glad to have that capability, and it's something we'll probably move into the future with as well after this whole COVID thing is over. So uh, great technology to be able to reach not only those in our uh, close to the church, but um, those are further away, those who are shut-ins, um, and of course, those who all over the world who have internet access who can join us online. So that would be our missionaries and many others that we know would love to be part of that service. So great to have that live stream opportunity on Sunday mornings. And uh, we can still let's come and let's stay in your car as well on Sunday mornings because we do broadcast on the FM channel as well. So um, we're going to continue just a to, with some themes to to uh, take us into the new year. And in particular, I think that this has been kind of a uh, crazy week as as those of you that have been following the news, it's kind of hard to miss uh, what happened at the Capitol on Tuesday. And um, so we're going to be basically just kind of be saying, how do we come off of a, of a, of a year like 2020? Well, 2021 has proved to be no, uh, no exception. And we are continuing some of the um, roller coaster ride into the into this new season and so um what we're going to be looking at today is how can we walk in wisdom in light of all that's going on the line and then uh, sandy grove rn is back with us with uh with health tracks and she's going to be sharing today about some tips about those of you or those of you who have loved ones who are taking medications and how some tips on kind of keeping all that straight very very important 
that this is, uh, and those of you that are doing that, you know how, how much of a challenge that is. And finally, we want to pray. We want to pray, and according to Second Chronicles 7.14, they just continue to let that be something that leads us and guides us. Uh, and now, I think more than ever, we are still needing that prayer. So we will close with that time of prayer today. So how do we walk in wisdom in 2021, heading into New Year? Well, we just didn't get much of a breather there, did we? Uh, there, we I'm not even sure we had uh, time to even catch our breath. And uh, obviously, last Tuesday, there was an attempt to interrupt our democratic system in the United States of America. It was an attack on the U.S. Capitol. Um, I don't know about you, but I was, uh, you know, as we were watching the, the events unfold, um, and as we moved into the evening, um, I was very encouraged to watch as Vice President Pence uh, resumed the meeting. Of course, Congress there responding in kind and back at, uh, it's like, now, where were we on the agenda? Oh, yeah, Arizona. Let's pick up where we left off. And uh, even though there had been several hours of uh, pandemonium, uh, wasn't it heartening just to see that uh, you know, there, there's no um, slowing down the process? And our and I, I, I appreciate our uh, leaders for having the courage to do that and to follow our Constitution in that way. Um, um, but I, I think that that for 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 me and maybe for a lot of you as well, we're we're learning how to try to decipher the news cycle these days. And there's just so much information. And uh, here again, um, there is no shortage of um, uh, varying ideas and opinions, and some even outlandish conspiracy theories that are out there. And you have to try to to how do you know how to respond to all of them? So that's kind of what I'd like to look at. We're going to look at wisdom. We're going to look at wisdom tonight. And I hope that this is going to be helpful to you. Uh, it was for me as I was looking into this. Now, we've gotten used to, as a nation, certainly over 2020, uh, people preferring narrative over objectivity. They prefer narrative. They, 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 they have a story that, that tickles their ears. And what does that mean when it tickles our ears? Uh, I, I was just thinking what that meant. I'm just I'm scratching here but I'm, because I'm thinking about tickling and scratching and itching and all that kind of stuff. So, so, but I'm thinking, okay, if my hand, if my left hand itches and I've got this hand over here, I want to do something to take care of that. So I'm going to scratch that hand until, until the, the itch has gone away. And so there's something about that, 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 that this process over here meets what this needs over here. And that's kind of what preferring a narrative is like. It's like the narrative is like, I kind of like this way this sounds. The story that I'm hearing here matches what I need to hear. So we go with that narrative. And I would, I would encourage you to say that's not the way that I believe that, that God wants us to respond to these things. Um, and then what we end up doing as well is we not only pick the narrative, but we tend to prefer the people that, uh, that tell us that narrative. So I appreciate people. And what I've been trying to do is to be a little bit more, let's hear objective sources as best we can find out. Um, I don't know about you, but um, I've had to track down some that uh, I did a little bit of research to find what news sources kind of which ones are there's there's actually agencies now that uh, that they, they objectively try to evaluate which ones are going to be on the right, which ones are going to be on the left, which are a little bit more toward the center and which ones are right down the middle. Now, you even have to take that with a grain of salt, but at least I find that's a, a helpful start for that sort of thing. Otherwise, we end up finding ourselves in an echo chamber. And we really never do subject ourselves to the truth. Um, so, we, so what's the alternative to the narrative? The alternative is objectivity and to be, be able to listen, um, to hear the facts from both sides before forming opinion. Um, somebody said something that, that I thought was really um, helpful in terms of this, and certainly with the news cycles being what they are these days. Um, and basically what this person said was, you know what a good uh, uh, um, practice is to wait 48 hours. A news story breaks, um, and there's a lot of opinions on both sides and a lot of emotion. And before you know it, um, we're following some some pattern that isn't really helpful in determining how to to understand this. So, what is the way to go? Is to um, is to basically wait 48 hours and see where things land and see what really is true before we be, begin to really uh, form an opinion. Now, sometimes there's not the time to do that, but I really do believe there's there's wisdom these days in just waiting and being patience, patient when we hear things. Well, 
Still, who do you believe? Well, of course, we, I think, probably are a bit ahead of me on this one. And uh, what we do need to understand and believe first is God's word. And what does God's word say about, about wisdom? Well, it says a lot. And there are things on every page that talk about God's wisdom. But I really like the words we find in James in regard to this. And they're familiar ones to you. But this is a good time, I think, for us to take them to heart and to be reminded of what they say. So, um, so let's heed how wisdom is defined on, in God's word. And this is from James chapter 3. We're going to be looking at verses 13 through 18. So let's begin by, by looking at James, uh, James 3, 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom, and it's put in quotes there, does not come from down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, even demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. <laughs> well, that pretty well defines uh, this last week, doesn't it? And there certainly was chaotic responses to everything that went, not, not the chaos, not only the chaos itself, but the responses to it. And so you really see a, a, a sense here of, of words that pop out. Um, let us show it by our good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. So there really is that sense that humility is the, the leading point uh, for all that we come to understand and land on in terms of the truth. And of course, it says there's an enemy of that. Bitter, if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. In other words, if, you, if those are in our hearts and those are, those are going to be coloring our ability to even determine truth in the first place. And so if we have stored that up, stored up bitter envy, selfish ambition, um, and really haven't looked to God and his wisdom, but rather have become, let's say, I, I hate to use the, this word, but in a sense, it's, it, but because I think that, that certainly there is a degree to which the word political is something that's just a reality in our world today. But um, if we become political and uh, always side one way or the other and never, never stop to listen or think, uh, through these things, then I believe that, that that can build up that sense of that kind of callousness and bitter envy that we might have in our heart. And Paul, and, and I'm sorry, James declares it there, that kind of wisdom doesn't isn't from heaven. It's earthly. It's unspiritual. And uh, so we are called to avoid that. And um, I do believe that that's important all the more for believers because because certainly we are under the microscope these days. Uh, there are people hurting on our world who need the good news and the message of Jesus Christ. And if the people that, that are supposed to be having that as a priority, we want to lead with that. We want to be making sure that that's what people read in our lives and not see, see our politics or our opinions about whatever it might be. If we're leading with that and they never, they never get around to hearing, uh, the good news and reading our hearts as well. Isn't that, don't you get get a feel that that's kind of a, um, what do you call, uh, kind of a wrench in the gears? It's kind of just throwing uh, throwing God off course in what he wants to do with our lives. Well, the second part of this passage, I think, uh, begins to delineate some of the things that are part of the wisdom that we want to exemplify. And I do believe that uh, if we follow these things, that is going to color how we put the information together um, and so that's what comes, that's what usually ends up being our opinions and flavoring the way that we respond to our world. And so, so the wisdom that comes from heaven, comes from heaven, is first of all, pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit. It's impartial and sincere. So I just want to comment on each one of those. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, items. There. So I'll just make a brief comment on each one of them. Pure. I know a lot of you probably remember those old ivory commercials that says, remember what it would say, ivory soap, was, they, they went on the idea that it was pure, but it was 99% and 44 one hundredths percent 
pure. I don't know how they came up with that 4400th, but but that's that's where 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 they landed on that. And it's interesting that even with that kind of technology uh, as it were available at that time, uh, that's the best that they could do. Now, most people say, well, that's good enough for me. I can't even imagine how they get that close. Well, it gives you that idea that even the most pure thing that we can we can put together from our perspective, uh, from a human perspective, is never going to approach and succeed at the pureness of God. But that's what we want to do. We want to aim to that kind of purity. And so we need to, even in our own thoughts, make sure that there is nothing that is coloring it, staining it, uh, um, um, tainting it in any sort of way, and if we, if there is, if there is any kind of thing in our heart uh, that is that is harboring hatred, or bitterness, or any kind of intolerance uh, toward a subgroup, or toward uh, maybe other individuals, whatever it might be, that we need to make sure that, uh, and certainly our love for God is pure there. Then peace loving. <laughs> peace loving, that's a convicting one for me. I don't know about you, but sometimes it's just you just you don't want to let people get away with kind of some some craziness, and uh, and so if they say something that is uh, that is not you feel you know, your, your knee jerk response is that's not right. That's that's uh, that's um, certainly something that uh, I think we need to, we need to go to fisticuffs about that one. I don't know where that word came from, but that's what that's what comes to mind. Um, to be contentious about things. If we're peace loving, then that's where we need to be. And so if we get into discussion about these things, it cannot be come from any place other than the wisdom from above, which is peace loving. Consider it there again. We need to be considerate no matter who it is that we're speaking with. But if, if we disagree, if it's a, a matter of something, quite often what happens online, if people are involved in social media, we don't know the other person. So we, we,